Hey guys, welcome to the shop. Believe this or not, it is actually January 1st, 2021. Now, some people thought we wouldn't be here or something else is going to happen or suddenly some switch was going to get flipped or something. You know what, this reminds me of uh, Y2K, remember that? When the computers were just going to take over the world and everything was going to shut down and we were going to be able to get to our money and we were going to be able to buy cigar box guitar parts. You remember all that fiasco? Did that happen? No. Okay. So, I have had concerns expressed lately that, oh, Ken has quit making cigar box guitars. It, what is that, some kind of world tragedy if I did? But, you know, I want you to think about something. Don't let all this uh, 2020 and Y2K garbage make you paranoid. I have a question for you, just one question. Do you really think that I quit making cigar box guitars? Well, do you, punk? No, I have not quit making cigar boss guitars i have slowed down after the I, I don't know 225 videos i mean what am i going to do now so there's playlists there's a playlist there's a big playlist whereas i have to have this yeah y'all are used to this there's a playlist up there when you're really burned out and netflix doesn't do it for you anymore called how to build a cigar box guitar you can watch all 200 some videos up there so click that link right up there but in order to restore your faith i am doing this episode 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 rented lips called canned headstocks now there's a reason for everything i say even if i don't know what it is but canned headstocks so we're going to make some headstocks today and um I got some, in fact, we're going to make some necks. I got a bunch of neck wood here, and I got some salvage wood, this tongue and groove stuff. And we're going to make some headstocks that we're going to attach to necks. But, again, this is going to be called canned headstocks. Now, there's a theme here. And if you can figure out what it is, and you, you are the first one to send me an email. Now, my email address is at the end of the episode. If you're the first one that sends me an email telling me the correct answer, what this is really all about, what the common theme is, then I'm going to send you one of these headstock blanks and I'm being done. You can drill your holes in it yourself for your tuners and mess it all up and turn it in whatever you want. But I will send you one and I might, don't bank on it, but I might get generous and send you some other stuff too. So pay attention. First one in the continental United States, I am not going to ship to Siberia or the North Sea of the UK or, or, or wherever else you're at. I, I can't do that. Continental United States only. All right, let me set this wood out of the way over here where, where it will come crashing to the ground in the middle of the shot like it always does. And let's do the housekeeping. First off, you know you want to give me a like. This is a like. Thumbs up. It's right down there. Give me a like. And don't forget to subscribe. And if you subscribe, don't forget to hit the bell. Do not covet my Holstein cow bell thing. Anyway, hit the bell. That way you get notified and your life doesn't go on hold while you're waiting to know if I release another exciting video. Now, to wrap up the housekeeping... You know we have a matchbook of the episode. This one is about your health. I know that you have New Year's resolutions and most of you do some diet thing for about two or three hours till you see that box of donuts. But hey, I appreciate you trying. But the matchbook of the episode is, well, let's talk about why it's the matchbook of the episode. Your intelligence level and your intellect depend on where you eat that's right so if you eat at wise man's cave wise man's cave oh by the way it says right here it's a good place to eat most 
matchbooks for caves and modals that have caves in the modal say bad place to eat right right anyway Wiseman's cave good place to eat if you eat there in Hannibal Missouri I need you to drive there right now and find out if it's still there and if it is you let me know okay anyway wise man's cave matchbook of the episode now let me figure out what it is I'm gonna make an episode about so we can get to work okay I know here we go okay we are gonna make some headstocks out of this tongue and groove floor wood now I want you to think about this um, this came from a cool place Remember the contest? Yeah, keep that in the back of your head. Don't forget. Make sure you eat at Wise Man's Cave. That way you remember. But think about it. What kind of wood do they use for tongue and groove stuff on a floor that's over somebody's head in a fancy house in some place like Topanga Canyon, California? Well, they're not going to use some kind of cheap wood. And it's got to be able to hold a load this way and not this way. Because there's joists underneath, joists, floor joists, that are the ceiling of one room. And then they sit like this. And these boards sit up on here and are nailed to this. So this stuff is pretty strong. Now, I think I can make two headstocks out of this if I cut it in half and if it's thick enough for two uh, headstocks. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this fancy measuring device and go to this headstock up here on this arch craft which again I got a playlist I've been working on this one for a while uh, but we're going to measure a headstock that's been in existence and not broken for almost 80 years so that might be an indicator that that's strong enough so I've already done that because I have a lot of foresight again because I'm smart because I eat at wise man's cave and it's this much so if I take this and hold it up against here like this see that I end up just a tad shy of where that groove is right there so if I can find a way to cut this right down the groove I will have the thickness plus a little bit for two headstocks. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut these into 20 inch pieces. Now, you remember I did an episode about headstocks. I'm going to try to give you a link to that episode right up there, right about now. But we took our template that I got a long time ago from Darren Dukes, the one that taught me a lot of things about this, and figured out I need about 10 inches to make two of these. And so I'm going to cut this board this way into 20 inch pieces. And I got a few of these boards here that are more than, that's more than 20 inches, so much for your math lesson for today. So let me get these cut into 20 inch sections and now we're going to go to the bandsaw and cut them in half this way. Okay guys, I want to show you a little trick. If you ever have to work on your bandsaw or change the blade out, you know that this loosens and tightens the adjustment and takes the slack out of the blade. You also want to make sure your switch is off, everything is unplugged. And I like these foot switches, these sewing machine pedals I've told you about. But once you get your blade on one of the wheels, Put some tape on there like that to hold it on so you're not fighting with everybody and if you do both of them then you can tighten it up and cinch it up and then pull the tape off and get to work but that's the easy way to do that i've heard a lot of people complain about these things that they're hard to change the blades on but that's a little trick for you all right guys i have the center marked already cut and like so with the bandsaw and it's a lot easier than setting up a table saw. But you guys are like, hey, wait a minute. This this was a lot wider over there and the and tongue and groove are gone. Yeah, yeah, they are. And why is that? Well, this will not fit underneath the guide of the bandsaw. So we just 
cut this off and this off and it was real simple all you have to do is mark off how wide you need the headstock to be it needs to be that wide there we go we're good there and then you just simply clamp on a piece here if you need to cut this much off you just put the clamp there move this over measure the distance between the blade and then once you've got the front one on you take this and make sure that the back and the front are marked up right and everything is true all right so it's pretty simple to get this down to this and remember we want to keep this at about 18 20 inches so we can run it through a planer without struggling and now we've set up the guide up there and we've got our little fence here so all we've got to do is push this through like so Now remember, we started off with a measurement of the headstock on the Archcraft old arch top. So we've got about that much to work with there. All right, there we go. Everything is as thick as it needs to be. Now we're gonna cut these in half. We're going to uh, cut the scarf joint in them and then cut out the headstock. Okay, I took some sticks and put them on those headstocks I was making. I got a flock of new uh, guitar necks here. And, um, well, I saved one of them. Remember, if you saw the beginning of the episode, I told you that there's something significant about this wood. And if you're the first person in the continental United States that sends me an email that tells me what's significant about this wood and where it come from, I'm going to send this neck to you and, and depending on how good you've been doing your homework learning the metric system I might send you 
some other cool stuff in the box too. But anyway guys, when you're doing headstocks, always be on the lookout for material that you can put on the end of a stick. You'll see dresser drawers and cheap uh, furniture at yard sales and that kind of stuff. And you get a piece of wood like this and you can turn it into something cool like this, which turns into something really cool like this. No, I didn't quit making stuff like that. I just got sidetracked a little bit. Now, don't forget to give me a like and subscribe if you haven't. And I have to listen to this song for some reason. I can't figure out exactly why, but maybe you should too. Hey, I'll see you next time. Do not covet my goober hat. I see you. See ya. Turn it off. I said I'll see ya, right?